walk on in, Bridge. Oh. Just call me Bridge. <laughs> Sorry. She's trying to be nice. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> Is that our real take? All right. <laughs> I'm excited. Are you excited? Trevor. What's up, man? You know how bad I've been itching to go camping. Oh yeah. Literally ever since our little overlanding excursion that we, uh, that we did in the fall, that's all I've been able to think about. Camping's kind of our thing. Yeah, dude. And we got all these crazy builds. There's gonna be overlanding happening. And I mean, you know me, I'll camp in a hammock, bro. I don't need much. But Bridget, on the other hand, is not so sure how she feels about camping or tents. Yeah, uh, tents are sus, pretty much. <laughs> that's what I think. <laughs> Why? I, I don't like the idea of being surrounded by fabric in the middle of the woods. I just don't think it's a safe thing to do. <laughs> Literally anything could be in the woods, like bears, Bigfoot, a murderer, <laughs> you know? What about, what about a uh, half bear, half Bigfoot murderer? Yeah, no thanks. <laughs> Bottom line, tents are sus. Tents are sus, I'm on board now. I'm done. <laughs> That's fair. So, if, I'm sold. Yeah, yeah, if tents what are, are- What are we gonna do about this, dude? How do we camp? <laughs> I don't know, dude. Pause the video. All right, we're done. <laughs> <So, dude>. Bye, <laughs> guys. <laughs> no, I've been thinking long and hard about it, how we can avoid the murderers, bears, and Bigfoots and uh, bring some of the comforts of home with us. And I'm thinking we build a sick tow-behind camp trailer, like a, a giant go-kart-sized pop-up trailer type deal. Oh, snap. Yeah. Yeah? Wouldn't that be sick? That would be hella cool. Yeah, dude. So I think today, let's just get a design on paper. I'll get some parts ordered and we can start this as a uh, another build for the channel. Hell that yeah. Sounds, sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah. So I think first step, since we're pretty much going to be starting from scratch, we identify what our key like design features are. Like, what do we want? Like more specifically, what do you want? What's going to make you comfortable and happy out there? in the middle of the woods? Um, definitely four walls with a roof. Gotcha. Um, a door that locks. Yep. Windows with like curtains. Okay. And I wanna make it, I wanna make it look pretty. Okay, so you're on interior design. Yes. So we got windows, um, make it look pretty. Door. Door that lock. locks, comfortable. What do you okay. think? that it should have. Yeah, well, we're gonna have to make it lightweight because we are towing this behind go-karts. Um, I'm thinking we make it big enough to be nice and comfortable. So I wanna fit like a full-size twin bed in this thing. Big old memory foam, six inch memory foam mattress, full-size twin bed. Um, I'm thinking it should be big enough to be able to sit up in so you can comfortably like sit up, like go through your pack or whatever, just like, sit up and read, look at your phone, whatever you want to do. Oh, we could also set it up solar. Imagine fully off grid, be able to charge our phones, run interior lights, exterior lights, fans for ventilation. Can you get enough power from solar for that? Yeah, dude, I think we can. We'll, we'll actually sit down and do the math. We'll figure out what size battery we're going to need, um, what size solar panel we'll need and ideally we'll be able to build something that we can run completely sustainably off grid, like indefinitely, which would be crazy. Zombie mobile. Yeah, dude, we'd be able to charge our phones, charge the GoPros, charge your camera, Wow. all that. So anything with a USB we'll be able to charge. So I think what I'm gonna do is for like the trailer portion to connect it, we'll do an actual, we'll weld a trailer hitch to the back of the red cart and to Big Bob's cart. And I've got the axle from the blue cart that we can repurpose for our axle. We'll probably put some suspension on it because this thing's going to be heavy and bouncing around, but it's going to be a sick trailer, dude. Well, are we still going to do a camera trailer though? Yeah, absolutely. Like camera trailer. We're also going to need a trailer for just when we go on general overlanding where we need like to haul gear, just like a big standard trailer like we have uh, that we used on Big Bob's cart. So but we have multiple, like multiple trailers. Probably, which may become a space issue, but I guess we'll figure that out. 
What if we did something modular? Like a modular trailer system? Yeah, like a like a base and like attach stuff to it. Dude, that's an idea. That would actually be really sick because then we can use that one axle to do all of those things that we want to do. And I don't think we're going to need both at once at any point. So, bro, that might be the move. Wow. So first things first, we'll design the actual tr camper trailer part of it. And then we'll design the modular trailer base. That way we can use that later to make our camera trailer as well. So I think that's going to be really cool. A couple of things we can just swap out. I think first step is we should mock up what the interior space is going to feel like so we know. I want to make sure this is worth doing. If it's going to be cramped and stupid, then we'll cut this video here, but I'm pretty sure we can make it cool. All right, let's get cracking. Yeah. This is our trailer. Hope you guys like it. Thanks for tuning in. Like, subscribe, and we'll see you next week. <laughs> Just kidding. This is our mock-up though. What you see here before you, we've got a piece of gaff tape here on the ground and then this box. And what this basically does is this is the, the footprint of the interior of our trailer. So this is the size of a standard um, twin bed. Yeah. So, I don't know, get in there, take a seat, Bridget. Let's see what you think. That's so much room, scoot over. Trey, put the camera down, see if we can get three of us in here. <laughs> okay. No problem. Dude, Kate, hey, we can hang out. Hell yeah. I'm not sleeping with both of you. <laughs> Good. Okay. Well, Wait. Trey, get out. Get your camera. Off. <laughs> get out of here. Okay. So, anyways, that answers our questions about interior uh, floor space. Sounds like we have plenty. It answers a lot of questions. Yeah. Yes, it does. Next thing to do, can you just sit up against this wall for me? So what I'm doing now is I'm going to assume six inches below this for the mattress. So we're assuming that this is the top of our mattress here. So how much height do I need in order to make this comfortable? For you, Bridget, we could probably get away with three feet, but I think we're going to go to 40 inches. So 40 inches will actually look like... Oh, wow, that's kind of perfect. It's right to here. Can you sit? I'm going to hold that. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. 40 not, inches is tight. That's not bad. So that's what I want our max height to be. Dude, this is going to be roomy. Yeah, it's going to be sick. Yeah. All right, bet. That's key. I think we got the measurements we need. Let's go back in. We'll draw something up. Now comes the fun part. OK. Let me see this. So, looks like our little mock-up out there means we're gonna have plenty of room in that trailer. So, here's kind of what I'm thinking. This will be the base of it, right? And here's our little mattress. I want the majority, the most space that we can have be as tall as possible, but I also want the roof to be slanted in both directions. That way, if it rains, no rain pools on top, it'll all roll off. So I'm thinking the top of the roof line should be about here. And so this is our 40 inches. And then I've left space here because I think what I'm going to do is if we're going to run solar, we need batteries. So up here, from our side view, we'll build a little shelf like this. This will come up. This isn't perfectly the scale. And then, so pillows here, so you put your noggin. <laughs> and then this side view from the inside will just look like a shelf, but from the front, this will be a door that opens up. This is where we'll put our batteries. 
um, electronics, switch panel for any kind of fuse work that we're gonna do, all that'll be hidden inside. Um, and then to close it, I think we'll come up a little bit at the foot here and then come down like this. But what I'm thinking is this whole piece here should pivot like this to open up like a tailgate. And then I had a wild idea, Trevor. <laughs> what if I made a, a mosquito net half box that would open up as the door opens so you have like a pop-up trailer back half? Oh, snap. <laughs> Wouldn't that be sick? Little zipper entry, like a, uh, like a tent. I mean, not a tent, those are sus. <laughs> <laughs> But good news is Bigfoot comes around, you slam this shut <laughs> and we'll have a lock on the door so we can close it all up. Also cool thing is, we wanna talk about geometry for a second. You know how much we love trig here. We got in this right triangle, this is our hypotenuse, the longest side. So when it opens up, we're actually gonna have probably about a foot of overhang as a little like awning off the back, back of it um, in the fully open position. So that'll be sick. I'm digging how this is looking. And then windows. Windows? Yeah, okay, okay. So I think we'll put, let's do like some, we'll do like porthole windows on the side and these will slide open and have screens in them. And we'll do one on one side, one on the other. And then I'm thinking maybe we do a window right at the top, uh, like above that little shelf. And this shelf, we can, this is where we'll have our um, like phone chargers and everything. Mm -hmm. Put your gear. Did you want one up there? A skylight? I was thinking about this. We talked about this off camera and I was like, you know, it'd be cool. What if we had a skylight right above? So when you wake up, you can just look up, you know, or look at the stars. But then I thought about it and I was like, well, I think I kind of want to put a solar panel here. So if we're going to put our solar panel here, I was like, well, I could put it on slides and we could roll it out of the way like a sunroof. But I was like, yeah, a little complex. How about this? I'll put a big window in the door that opens up so that when you're sleeping, you can look out the front, the back, or both sides. But when you open it up, if you swap your pillow to around over here, you can look straight up through that window and it's a skylight. Is this how you get out? Yeah, this will be how you get out. So okay. the back piece will open up. There'll be the zipper and you can just get out like a tent. And then when you want to get back in, zip, get in. <laughs> zip yourself back in. Wow, love that. Close it. <laughs> Are you guys as excited as I am? Yeah. I've been hyped about this for a long time. <laughs> Anyways, um, before we do that though, because we're going to use that, that uh, modular trailer system for not only this, but also for the camera cart. If I was just doing this myself, I'd probably put the wheels right about here, just for this particular trailer. But I want to take into account that this is actually going to drop onto, I'll drop beneath here, an approximation of what I'm thinking. We're gonna do all of this out of steel one inch square tube. And this little trailer, a wheel in the middle, tongue off the trailer, something like this. So this is what we're gonna build kind of for the trailer and I'll figure this out a little bit more, but I wanna figure out where the wheels are gonna land underneath this thing based on where we're gonna want the trailer for Trey when he's getting towed behind the red cart with a camera boom. Again, things we haven't talked about publicly, but things that are going to happen. Um, so I think, so we can figure that out. Let's open the garage door. We'll get a couple quick measurements off the back of the red cart, throw that axle down so we can kind of visualize it all. Mm. And we can kind of get to wrapping up this early conceptual design process. Anyways, all right, let's do that. All right, come here, Trevor, take a seat. All righty. So this is kind of where I'm envisioning putting you for a camera trailer. On a stool? Yeah, no, not on a stool. <laughs> but as far as your location and uh, proximity to the cart. Okay. So what I'm looking at is about three feet off the uh, back of the cart here ought to be the middle of our trailer. Okay. So that point that you're sitting in the chair right there. I'm so that should be... That would be the middle of our trailer. So that's where the axle is going to go. Okay. And then that puts you... Far enough back, you'll get boom shots all the way up to here. You're a little close to this, but what I can actually do is on the trailer, I can make a, a plate that just comes up and like diverts the exhaust gases off the, the side. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it won't be touching you. But this, I want to keep you close enough because a long trailer is going to be way more unwieldy, especially with you on it behind me. I wanted to keep it 
kind of short behind the, the cards because they're not very long cards. Yeah. So I'm thinking three feet out from the back, and then I'm also thinking uh, three feet squared. Let's half a 36. What would be the full length? 15, 18. So that would be the end of the, this is just for the modular part of our trail. Yeah. So I'm thinking a three foot by three foot box. And that's the platform from which we set the uh, camp trailer down onto. Yeah. We also build a top plate that bolts down onto that for the camp or for the, uh, the camera trailer. And we also build a side, I think the sides and just like a classic trailer that will also bolt onto that. So that's going to be the base frame. So the base is going to be a, like a three by three, like box with, on wheels with some suspension. Precisely. So okay. like, yeah, look at it. You can move that chair now. I mean, in that crack is pretty close. That's, that's kind of cool. <laughs> and we do. It's not going to be much higher than than these actual. Uh, <laughs> that's, yeah, that's perfect. It's not going to be much higher than the actual uh, wheels either. We're trying to keep everything low, so you're going to be. You, we could have you sitting down like that low, or we can set you up higher. But I think for both of our applications. Well, well, okay, today we've been talking a lot about the camera aspect of this. We haven't really thought through the camera aspect of this. No. I'm just all saying that, all that much. We're, we're right. mentioning it, but like we don't. Even, we would have. We're gonna have to know how the boom arm would work. Like how we're gonna stabilize it. You know how we're gonna make it like safe. And that you know that's all like in beta. All I'm trying to get sorted for here and now is that the position of this axle and the size of this trailer is going to be something that we can work with. We don't have to figure out everything from the, on the camera trailer yet. No. But that a three by three platform for it, three feet back from the cart. I think that's going to be perfect for all the kind of trailers that we want to build. We are going to have to account for exhaust. Yeah. For the exhaust. Yeah, we'll just divert it with a piece of aluminum that's like uh, just a heat shield. Cool. I just came up with that because I was thinking about it and I was like, mm. I was like, I could do a different tailpipe. Yeah, I, w I wasn't thinking about that. No, I was. So it's a, a heat shield will do exactly what we need it to do. It'll either bolt onto the cart, which might not be a bad idea. Anyways, we're getting ahead of ourselves. <laughs> okay. Um. Cool. I'm going to go back in and we can kind of draw up what we want for that and keep this thing moving. Let's do that. Go get your camera. <laughs> Here's what we're looking at, bro. There's a revised version of our trailer. We have all these extra shocks. So we'll incorporate some kind of a suspension here. It will help you for the camera trailer as well as help just the general bouncing around of this whole thing. And we'll put it on some bump stops too so that if we do overload it when it's in full trailer mode that it's not gonna hurt anything. So that'd be pretty sweet. Three by three, we're gonna mount it just above the wheels with just enough room that we can have some compression for the shocks. Um, here's our camp trailer. So that three foot section is gonna end up somewhere in here. Well, maybe in here more. We'll, we'll, we'll figure out how long the tongue should be, but uh, wheels will go in here somewhere. That'll all work. We're gonna do all of this out of one inch square tube, uh, which would be really cool. So basically there's gonna be a steel frame that runs the whole side of this. We'll frame out the whole box, frame out and build the trailer. And then we'll tack interior and exterior plywood in, uh, and then you can paint that, make it look all pretty, get some succulents in there. It's gonna be so cute. So cute. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know, dude, I'm feeling pretty good about this. Um, it looks sick. Oh, oh, and then, so we'll have interior lighting LED strips that run the whole length of this back section of the camper. We'll have vents on either side at the top most peak to vent out the hot air and i'll do a vent down here to pull the cool air in we'll also do some exterior like floodlights so that you can turn on a switch from inside or outside and flick on floodlights and light the whole campsite which would be really huge because like you know you drop something at night it kind of sucks so that could be really cool we're gonna this overlanding is gonna be wild bro i just can't wait <laughs> Um, 
So we've got all the mechanical stuff. I've got enough here. I've got all my measurements and we've got more detailed version of that that I've been working on. Put together a cut list, order some steel, get these parts on order, figure out exactly how much juice we're going to need out of our solar panel, as well as what size battery we're going to need to run all of those fun accessories we've been talking about. So it's going to be pretty sweet. Are you excited? Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited. Trey, are you excited? I'm hyped, dude. Dude, I will charge you a very reasonable nightly uh, rental fee. Don't worry. Yeah, as long as I can stay with you guys. Yeah, dude, <laughs> we'll cuddle. See, if we were spooning, we would have fit perfect. Anyways, not that kind of channel. All right, well, I think that's all we need Bridget for. We'll let you get out of here and I'll go hit my computer and we can get into Excel. To figure out what size battery we need to power our electrical system overnight and when the sun's not shining, I had to do some research. And that research led me here to this blog post by explorist.life for DIY campers. This is a great post. If you're thinking about getting into solar, I recommend checking this out. This is super in depth, whether you're gonna be using DC electronics, uh, AC appliances, your wiring, goes into tons of great stuff. All we're looking for is going to be DC appliances. So in order to make my life easier, we're gonna be buying exclusively DC uh, electrical items for this build. And that way, it's gonna make things on the calculation side really easy. So all we're gonna need is they actually provide us with a, uh, an Excel sheet here, which is really handy. And what you're gonna do is you can see they have options for your 110 volt, your, uh, your DC appliances down here, uh, single charge items as far as drone batteries, cameras, stuff like that. You can do all the math in this uh, Excel sheet. I simplified ours to just what we need. So this is for DC appliances. All you're gonna do, you can put in your items here. Uh, you're gonna have to look up how many watts it's going to take uh, to run your appliance, whatever it is. We've got LED strips, fans, USB ports, floodlights. Each of these have their watts listed here, your quantity of each, and then from your watts and knowing this is 12 volts, your amps are calculated automatically. And then here we're going to insert how many minutes per day you think you might be using that particular item. So our floodlights, I said, maybe an hour a night we'll use the floodlights because really they're just to be turned on if you need to see something and then turned back off. But for the fans inside, I wanna run those all night and so I'm allotting for 1200 uh, minutes. So anyways, all that'll get calculated here and you can find what your total amp hour usage will be over the course of 24 hours. So that's what I'm looking at here. And it says that, and this is my worst case scenario. So worst case scenario, you were gonna use 42 amp hours over the course of a really crazy night where we leave everything on. So that being said, I think what I'll do is I'll just round up by a 50 amp battery, but we have to make sure that we have the right size solar panel to keep up with the amount of current we're gonna be drawing. So if we go over to here, I did some more research and on this website, Auto Boss RV, another really great site. I'll put links to all these in the description. And if we come down here, you can see that on average, a 100 watt solar panel will generate 30 amp hours per day. So on our worst case scenario, we were going to be expending 42 amp hours per day. I think under normal use case, we're gonna be using well under 30 per day. So all we need now is a 100 watt solar panel, a 50 amp hour battery. We'll get all of our electronics in. And with that setup, we should be completely sustainable off-grid just on solar. So that's gonna be pretty cool. And the math was pretty easy. All right, dude. We've got our general sort of build plan laid out. Uh, went through and did all our math on solar and that's gonna work out perfectly. We're not pulling a ton of power, so it's gonna be a pretty low-key setup. Um, just get some steel on order, start getting parts coming in and we can, uh, Tackle this thing in part two, what do you say? That sounds sick, my man. Stoked. Yeah, buddy, I can't wait, bro. <laughs> oh. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Yeah, do the thing. Ding! Yeah. <laughs>
Well, Bridget, thanks for running through. We'll catch you later. What was that? <laughs> I wanted to I hated I wanted that. To tap you up and leave. Oh, oh, dab me up again. <laughs> Super edge. I know. No, I wanted to dab him up and leave. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it, let's do it again. <laughs> Are you ready? All right. Well, I think that's all we need Bridget for, so uh, we'll catch you later. Okay. One more dab. You gotta give you snap. I feel you like snap or no? We shouldn't do this. <laughs> you guys just should full dab. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Can no, you? Can, it's so weird. Yeah, no. Can you just? Can you just turn and walk away, and I'll just give you a, <laughs> a boot out of frame. No. no come on. What do you want? <laughs> I don't even know. I don't even know. We want to just hard transition right into my. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I got you on a different one. You can just you can just spin out on this. Okay. My original idea was going to be literally to zoom into the white, which you go into your computer screen, which seems to make sense. To me. That's exactly what we're going to do. So then we don't have to do some big. <laughs> that is going to be the okay. best outtake ever. <laughs> that's all. Yeah. Yeah. We never use it. <laughs> no. That's can, can we just? Can we just? Can we just?